If you've stumbled upon this video, it's because you're interested in another Starbase summary. Let's check out what's going on out there at Starbase as SpaceX gets ready for Flight 11. We'll see a, quite a few things in the video here that are preparations for that launch coming up sooner rather than later. This isn't one of them. Here we're rolling a test tank. It's going from the production site out to Massey's. You can see it's got that uh, hot stage strut adapter, that new format strut adapter on the top. And it was rolling out the road in the night over to Massey's. There's a work stand going into Mega Bay 1. That's a dump truck. There's a work stand again, briefly, going into Mega Bay 1. Going to hop over here. Who took this? It's got a bird in it. I'm going to guess the watermark says gauge. <laughs> It literally does say Gage. If there's a bird in a shot, usually it's Gage. Caesar takes some good wildlife photos as well. Uh, but if there's a bird in a shot, you can guess that it's Gage's name. It'll be in the watermark a lot of the time. Appreciate Gage being out there working on some of the bots that we have deploy, the robotic cameras that catch some of these. And as he is out and about, catching some of these clips for us as well. This part here, it's like... Is it Star Wars or Starbase? It's like a delightfully uh, Star Warsian. That's not a word. Uh, looking launch pad there at pad two. There goes a hot staging ring into a mega bay, it looked like. Headed up to booster 15. Over at pad two, there is a door going into one of the cool. Whoa, what's going on here? Yo. Is this like some sort of drone hyperlapse from the jetties over there suddenly unexpectedly uh, drone footage I'm, I'm pretty sure here jack taking out the drone looks like getting some shots a little bit of a cloudy day there that <laughs> takes a lot to surprise me in these videos maybe some of y'all would disagree but i was not expecting the drone hyperlapse there also out near the jetties look at this wow that's like a like a clear sky rainbow there's not a bunch of clouds up above it it's a blue skies behind it and there's just enough water in the what in tarnation now? Tiny Starbase construction project? <laughs> well, I, I, I can't. Oh, we're going to zoom in even more. I feel like we need a trigger warning on this. Jeez, are we going to get like 240 FPS slow motion of the ants coming in and out of the hole? In any event, that concludes this Starbase summary's nature version or nature, <laughs> nature segment. Another shot of the production site over there. You know, you're out there, you're shooting starships, you're shooting boosters, you're shooting cranes and construction work and stuff like that, and every now and then you just got to take a moment to look down at the natural construction happening underneath your feet. I just made that up on the fly. Did y'all like that? And anyways, there's the launch and production sites. This is an interesting angle because you can see the uh, towers there kind of photographically compressed in with the production site. They're actually about a mile, what is it, 1.4, 1.7 miles away from each other. There's a longer shot of Massey's. We're going to jump in a little bit, time-lapse those clouds so you can see them roiling in the background. But uh, is this like Son of Frankencrane? <laughs> Remember when we had the, the crane that was made of all the smaller parts of the lesser cranes, and we called it Frankencrane, and that one had a different color top on it. There's the busted question marks, just static fire stand over at Massey's. They've been doing a ton of work over there. There's 18.1 and the 18.3 test tanks, one in the crusher and one next to it, standing by for more testing. Remember, they, they do these tests out there. They put it in the crusher. They put it full of cryogenic fluids. They get it to temperature. They get it to pressure. And then they pull and push, and they exert forces on it with those straps and cables and pistons that are all around that stand so they can simulate some of the forces that would uh, be encountered during flight. Here's a close-up of some of that. You can't see the pop here, but this tank did fail. You all saw that in the previous video we talked about on the opposite side of what we can get close to here, but uh, you can see all the different pillars, pistons, supports, and hydraulic rams. You can see where it goes blue and then shiny and then black. That's a big hydraulic piston that can exert force in a different direction, and you can twist and turn and pull and push on those things when they've got propellant in them to see how they fare. I know there's no data like flight data, but you can get an awful lot of data on the ground as well. There's an awful lot of testing you can do with these sort of, uh, they're not subscale, but they're subsystem articles, just smaller pieces 
of domes and tanks and welds. And here you've got the hot staging ring. I imagine they're going to put that in there. And they're going to push and pull on it and try to exert some force on it to see if that uh, strut design will hold up to the forces of flight. There is an exciting new bunker at Massey's. Everybody likes to see a bunker. I, Yeah, I really can't sell that one too much. Oh, hey, this is actually interesting. It's a deluge test. Deluge? Sorry. Every single time in the comments, there are comments about me and how I say that, but y'all know what I meant. Oh, wow, it actually comes over the... It keeps flowing and it comes... It, now, that, there's no way that's filling the entire thing. That's just hitting the concrete on the end and then overflowing into sort of the retention holding area at the end. Oh, hey! Looky there! That may very well be the last static fire. Oh, you want to hear it again? Sure, fine. See, there you go. Hey, you can listen to it twice. I gotta, I gotta watch for the shock waves to stop moving because I don't listen to the videos while they're going. I'm gonna talk over this one. Um, I don't, I don't listen to the audio and mix it all together on the fly. So I have to watch for the shock waves to know when to start talking again. But in any event, uh, some previous videos had asked that they hear the audio again. So there you go, have two bits of audio. Wow, <laughs> what are we, are we bookending the final pad one static fire with a bunker at, at Massey's? <laughs> This is the exciting content you come through here for. It's like, here's some guys placing concrete in a bunker and a goat and some doves in a grackle. Somebody's been putting some feet on the ground there, I guess. And then there's a Starship Static Fire, the last one from the Pad 1 design that'll ever happen. Is that a wild goat? It doesn't have like a goat collar or anything, but I haven't seen a bunch of wild goats running around out there. That is clearly feed that's been placed on the road. Uh, I was talking about birds being in shots earlier. That one's got Caesar's name on it. <laughs> in any event, let's go back over to the uh, storage assembly yard. That looks like a pad 2 ship quick disconnect arm. Remember, pad 2 doesn't have that uh, entire structure all set up yet, so they have been working on that back in the assembly area. Gives it multiple things. Like, here you can work at the Sanchez yard, this assembly area, back past the production site, actually. And if they're doing a static fire, you don't have to clear out that area. You can keep working on that arm while they continue testing at the launch pad over a mile away, right? So it makes sense to keep that stuff back there until it's all ready to go. Here we're working on that concrete prefab structure some more. I did see a lot of folks wondering whether or not uh, these concrete prefabs are going to get, like, windows cut into them? Do they put them up this way and then we'll see more windows cut out or something like that? I think we will see. Uh, I think there was some notes on the lack of windows and sort of how that makes a structure feel if you're supposed to be working there, but maybe they're going to cut some of them out. We'll see. There's a couple missing tiles in there. I hope that one weird colored tile isn't one of those metallic tiles again. There's a... Don't want to get that big orange splash all over the bottom of the ship. As cool as it looked, it wasn't Halloween, it wasn't time to dress up as SLS, and Starship did it last flight. So, I don't think they're doing that this time. Okay, here is the Pope vent in the background. Just sort of framed there in the OLM. And the ship is there, but also Caesar is here. So this isn't going to be anything like a static fire clip. Uh, maybe we're going to get this thing lifted off the pad. I did not look that far forward into the labels. We'll see. We know that part of the process here will be to remove the ship from the pad. A ton of testing happening, it looks like. But let's see here in the video, do we get that ship being removed from the pad and rolled back to the launch, to the launch site, to the production site. Oh, there you go. All right. So I knew that it had happened. I just didn't go far enough forwards in the, uh, the, the, Timestamps, like I can see the timestamps, and I'm like, okay, there's what the video is basically going to be about. Here's what I should be prepared to kind of talk about. And I didn't get to the end. I didn't remember if it was going to be lifted in this video or not, so I didn't want to, like, say, stay tuned to see it lifted off the launch pad. But, of course, this is important. They have to de-shipify 
pad one. They have to remove the ship adapter and the uh, little slow disconnect, the flexible umbilicals that they attach there. You can actually see it right there on top of the OLM. That booster quick disconnect has all the temporary plumbing for the ship on top of it. So they're going to have to de modify that pad so that it fits a booster again. They're going to roll that ship all the way back to the production site, finish off any final checks that they need to be doing there. Here's pad uh, one, or sorry, pad two. That's a cool shadow on pad two, but Caesar catching this thing coming around the corner. Pad two, from this perspective, you can see the reflecting pool there on your right. Pad two's over to the right in that shot. Is that the Pleiades? I mean, okay, it's a starship, but I've seen lots of starships. It's been a while since I've seen the Pleiades, if that uh, small constellation of seven sisters is the constellation I was thinking of. Just any astronomy fans in the chat, please let me know if I got that right. It really did look like it, though. So uh, Gage was out as well, it looks like. Gage on the other side of the road, catching the ship, rolling back late at night. I did see in the last video a bunch of y'all showing up in the comments saying thanks to the team out there. Sometimes this video only exists because they roll out in the middle of the night, and it's not always exactly known when this ship is going to roll. So Gage and Caesar might have been staked out there for hours and hours and hours, hanging out on the side of the road, sitting in a vehicle, something like that, waiting for this thing to go. It's the sort of thing where it's it's hurry up and wait. Like You, you never know exactly when that thing's going to move. But if you're in Brownsville, 25 minutes away and you see on Starbase Live that it's moving, it's going to take you 25 minutes to get there. It can roll back in that amount of time, right? So you don't necessarily, you're not really allowed to like stay in bed at the bunkhouse back in Brownsville and watch the cameras and then run into town, or sorry, run out to Starbase. I guess you could say into, into town. Whenever it's time to catch something, you do have to sort of stake it out there. So I really do appreciate y'all down in the comments saying thanks to the team who's making sure that we can get these cool views. And keeps cameras like this running. This is a remote control robotic camera. So somebody was on the other end of this camera awake in the middle of the night controlling the camera to get this shot for y'all. So both out there in the field and the remote team making sure that we're able to continue to share all of the cool shots that are happening out at Starbase. Now remember, we did see the first of the notices start to drop coming in no earlier than October 6th right now. It was a local notice to Mariners that showed a starship trajectory originating from Star Starbase down there in South Texas no earlier than October 10th with days that went all the way through the 12th. So it could happen anywhere in that range. We're going to be looking for more notices to come out. Make sure you're following us on social media and all the other places. Be on the lookout for Starbase updates. But that's going to do it for this Starbase summary. Appreciate you watching and we will see you nerds later.